you're looking like you used me for a visa. Yeah. And I'm sick of it, man. I'm just, I just wish I never brought him here. <laughs> Sorry, but you're not gonna get any sympathy from me. Seriously, this woman is a nasty piece of work. If this is how she acts on TV, just imagine what she must be like behind closed doors. I'm done. Go home! I'm not gonna be a Chantel and a Pedro and a Muhammad! Guys, sorry, hold, hold. We have to go to stack. You do what you want. Now, Angela being in a foul mood is nothing new, we're all used to that. But even by her standards, her attitude in this tell-all is horrific. But before we get to that, let's rewind to the start. So all cast members have arrived at the house the night before filming at the studio. Everyone's there except Angela and Michael. And the more that time goes on, the more the murmurings begin. Where are they? Everyone asks. Are they not coming? Actually, we just found out that they're like lying. Not Why coming? Coming tomorrow or what? I don't know. Uh, but we know they're not coming. They like can't come or they decided not to come because there's a difference. Emily is convinced that it must have been Angela's decision not to come, and Jasmine agrees. Both are under the impression that Angela doesn't want Michael to interact with the other castmates. They think that now Michael is there in person, she's worried about what he might say. Remember, up until this point, he's only ever joined Tellles via a video link. Angela's been in the studio herself in person, so she's been able to overshadow Michael. She's been able to make herself the centre of attention, and boy do we know she likes to do that. But this time round, she's not going to be able to control him. I think Michael. that she got to tell her story and tell Michael's story because he wasn't here. And now that Michael can tell his side... We have the two versions. Yes, oh, and I don't think she wants good... anyone to hear it. Yeah, it's a very good point by Emily and Jasmine, and it's right on the money, which we see the next day. You see, when Angela does eventually decide to grace everyone with her presence, there's a brief period of time where Angela is still getting ready, but Michael goes and sits in the green room. He finally gets to meet his castmates in person. Meanwhile, however, Big Ed goes to say hello to Angela. And it's to Big Ed, of all people, that Angela begins opening up about why they didn't arrive last night. I don't trust him. Right, that's why we go to the house last night. I don't want to go for him to get behind my back and be, oh, he's such a great guy and Angela's a crazy bitch. No. Here's an idea, Angela. If you're worried that everyone's going to think that you're a bitch, maybe don't act like a bitch. Yeah, of course everyone's going to like Michael more than her. We all feel sorry for the guy. We've all seen for years now how she speaks to him, how she treats him. Like, it's hilarious to me that she feels the solution to this is to stop him from spending time with his fellow castmates. But <laughs> you want to hear something even more f***? Angela's managed to find the only other castmate who sympathises with her line of thinking. Yeah, these two really do have a lot in common, don't they? Send him home. Like, I, I right, want, away, I right away. Do it. I, don't, I, I know, don't. I can't and wait. And I know you love He's him. He's been rushing me for a license, rushing me green card. I'm not getting you, bitch. Trust Ed to be on Angela's side. Of course he'll be on her side. Two of the most toxic people to have ever graced our screens just casually talking about deporting a man, sending him back home as if it's no big deal. Send him home right away, says Ed. What a vile man. Is it really any wonder that Michael does eventually flee Angela when she's out here openly talking like this, openly stating that she doesn't want to give him independence. She doesn't want to get him a license or a green card because, you know, heaven forbid the man that you've been working to bring to the States for seven long years finally earns the right to stay, work and live in the States. What a crime that would be. You're looking like you're Use me for a visa. Yeah. And I'm sick of it, man. I'm just, I just wish I never brought him here. I swear that's my heart. I wish I never brought him here. Angela tells Ed that she feels like Michael's made a fool of her. But let's be real here. This woman has made a fool of herself. She only has herself to blame. It's her own horrible behaviour that's led to the majority of the cast avoiding her like the plague, but embracing Michael. Oh. Whoa! Whoa! Look at this guy! <laughs> I 
Michael, how you doing? I'm nice fine. to see you here. Thank you. Oh nice my goodness, you. man. Now, even though everyone's eager to meet Michael in person and eager to hear him speak for himself for once, it seems like Angela has struck the fear of God in the man. When asked why they didn't arrive last night to the house, Michael barely says anything. Just compare Michael's response to what we just heard from Angela. Is it because of Angela? Yeah, what's the truth? Was that because y'all were arguing? Uh, sort of, but misunderstanding, yeah. you know, between us, it's private, you know? I understand. How ironic. Angela was worried that Michael would bitch about her to the cast, yet he's the one saying it's private. He's the one staying loyal. It's her that's doing all the bitching. It's her with the double standards, as always. Angela believes she has the God-given right to talk to Ed about whatever she wants, but if Michael dares to open his mouth to the cast, then all hell will break loose. She'll lose the plot. In fact, just look at how Angela reacts when she eventually gets ready and realises that Michael has been sat with the cast without her for all this time. Why are you sitting in here? Because I Because to. why? Why are you sitting in because here? Because I, I have to. I said, and I don't mean to be rude, guys. You don't get out my sight. I don't mean to be rude, guys. Angela, you've been rude every second of your miserable life. The way she talks to Michael is absolutely absolutely unacceptable. She speaks to him like he's a second-class citizen, like he's a dog or something. It's disgusting to watch. This is precisely why no one likes this evil woman. Yeah, newsflash Angela. We don't like you not because of something Michael might say, it's because of you. Do I make my self clear? Did you, Cause did. you ain't gonna have time to make these people think I'm the bad with no more. Of course not. You no, really didn't say anything bad. Yeah. I, listen, it's okay, I don't need, this is my husband. The rest of the cast, and production for that matter, are just watching in sheer disbelief. They're watching her literally abuse the man in front of their eyes, and yet no one says a thing. Yeah, no one says a thing. Everyone seems to be scared of this woman. They were all talking big game. They were all talking about her behind her back at the house, but now in front of her, they all melt. Even Jasmine stays silent, and we all know she's not exactly a stranger to raising her voice. You told them what? We How you sleep in the living room? How you haven't your wife in two months? Let's talk about it. Wait, that's why Angela's so wound up? Because Michael stopped sleeping with her? Is she really surprised? <laughs> Is there even room for the poor man in that pigsty of a bedroom? I'm not surprised he sleeps in a different room. I mean, the poor guy's probably so exhausted every day after being expected to clean up after her and her huge family that he probably doesn't have energy for sex, even if he wanted to, which I highly doubt anyway. Who'd want to sleep with her? She's vile, inside and out. You knew me for seven years. You got all these people out there in the goddamn world thinking I'm a bitch and I'm a good-hearted mother If I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here right now pouring my heart out in front of these people. Sure, Angela, sure. You keep telling yourself that you're this kind-hearted, perfect person. But what I don't understand is I don't understand what she thinks Michael's done to get us to hate her. She seems self-aware enough to know that people don't like her, yet she draws the line at looking at herself, looking introspectively for why that might be. She's convinced that Michael's the bad guy. Michael's trying to make her look like a crazy bitch. So go ahead, Angela. Try and help us understand why you're so unhinged. What is it about Michael just sitting there that has you this angry. You cheated on me, you goddamn bitch is somewhere in New Jersey. Is that why you're sleeping in a different room? Illinois. Your whore is here in New Jersey. Now, just for the sake of clarity, this isn't a new cheating scandal that's emerged since Michael's arrived in the States. Angela's referring here to the incident that we saw. The incident where Michael was exposed for sending voice memos to another American lady. Memos in which he was professing his love for her. But, and here's where I take issue, that lady evidently lives in New Jersey. Angela and Michael live in Hazelhurst, Georgia. 
We're talking like 700 odd miles between them. Is she really trying to link that to why Michael's sleeping in another room? What, are we, are we supposed to believe that the man with no license, remember Angela doesn't let him have a license, the man who's kept at home all the time, kept under watch while she goes gallivanting around to private investigators and God knows where else, has just been sneaking out to meet up with his new lover? <laughs> like, the math isn't quite mathing. It just feels like a pathetic attempt by Angela to bring up old news and try desperately to make Michael look bad. But he's just not rising to the bait. He's just sitting there. He's totally disassociated. He has this blank stare on his face. And the fact that he's not reacting is only making Angela even angrier. She realises she now just looks even worse. I'm done. Go! Home. I'm not going to be a Chantel and a Pedro and a Bahamas. Okay. Sorry, hold, hold. We have to go to stack. You do what you want. Uh, um, I'm pretty sure Chantel, Pedro and Mohammed wouldn't want to be you either, Angela. Angela does everything she can, from raising her voice to standing up and towering over him, to try and intimidate Michael. Now, compare that to Michael's own calm behaviour. Like, can you just imagine if the roles were reversed? Can you imagine if a man was doing this to a woman? There's absolutely no way that that would be allowed on TV. So there's no way that this should be allowed either. This is abuse. This is bullying. We're seeing it right in front of our eyes. And rather than doing anything about it, production are just ushering her onto stage instead. And as she grumbles away as she's walking onto stage, Angela again reiterates this warped view that she has that Michael's the one in the wrong here. What makes me so upset is when I know he's lying and the people are like, oh, I get it. I get that makes me so mad because they can't see that he's lying. Angela, here's the thing, right? We know that too. We know the guy's been lying. We never really believed that he loved you. Deep down, we all know he's lied just to get a green card, right? But the thing is, we just don't care. This is karma. This is karma from the universe for you being a bitch. You deserve everything you're gonna get in exactly the same way that Michael deserves what he's gonna get. Like, no one with a heart would begrudge Michael's citizenship. The guy's earned it for having put up with you for seven years. And it's funny because when the tell-all actually starts, the first question that Michael's asked is if he's ready to defend his actions. I'm ready for it and I will defend it to the best of my That's knowledge. That's what he does best. He'll lie oh, he'll take that I will, lie I will to the tell, grave. I will tell you how it is. You're you truthful, know. right? Now, while we don't get to Michael and Angela's segment of the tell-all in this episode, that's coming in future episodes, and boy does it look like it's gonna get wild. Boy does it look like her behaviour just gets worse and worse. In this episode, on one solitary occasion, just once, Michael tries to give his two cents on what he thinks is going on with Ed and Liz. It's no different to what all the other cast members are encouraged to do, what Angela herself has been doing. Only look at the fury with which Angela reacts to Michael speaking. She yeah. found someone else. Let her be. Yeah. Nothing, oh yeah. Don't say anything again. Nothing but or anything. Oh, shut Let up. it go. Shut the up. It's as simple as shut that. The I wish that just for once in Angela's life, someone tells her the same. Maybe, just maybe, maybe by some miracle, maybe backed by the rest of the cast, maybe Michael will actually have the opportunity to say what he's wanted to say for the last seven years. Maybe now that he's on American soil, he can give as good as he gets. I mean, can you just imagine the scenes if Michael were to fall to his knees, look up to the heavens and scream, SHUT THE F*** UP, ANGELA.